you're about to watch a live DoorDash shift that I just completed. And I want you to think about one question as you go through this shift. Was this shift mismanaged? So that's it. Let's jump into the shift. Let's see what happened. And I'm going to circle back with you later on here to see if it truly was mismanaged or not. So first thing to note here, let's look at the time in the top left. It's 5.46 p.m. Now, if you remember, I started my shift at 5.30. So there's a good 16 minutes waiting for just my first order. So this one, this is number one, Los Panchos Taco Shop at $9.50 for 3.2 miles. Now that's not too bad. The starting position where I'm at, indicated by the blue dot, I'm pretty close to the restaurant, indicated by that shopping bag. So there's not a lot of miles there. I just gotta run up north to make the delivery there. So all in all, as far as dollars to mile payout, it's not too bad. Now this order from True Food Kitchen, $11.50 for six miles. That's pretty good. That's just under $2 a mile. And one tip for you here. Now, if we can see on the left side here, this is near Fashion Valley Mall, AKA it's a mall, right? So if you have requests in a mall, I want you to really understand how easy or difficult it's gonna be. So I really zoomed in, and when you do zoom in on the Dasher app, it'll show you kind of the nearby stores, what have you, kind of like Google Maps, right? And I wanna know, is this on the edge of the mall? You know, one of those restaurants that are on the outskirts, or am I actually gonna have to go deep into the mall to the food court? Because in my opinion, there's a big difference between parking, which can be difficult on its own, and just going to the restaurant that's kind of, again, bordering the mall, versus going into the mall, usually through one of the retail stores, and usually to the center of the mall to that food court. I wanna stop us for a quick timeout here because there's something Kind of funny that happened here that I want to highlight. Now, when you're out delivering, I recommend to get the right accessories. There's an Amazon storefront link below for that, right? Hot and cold bags, catering bag, and a pizza bag. Well, how big do you think your pizza bag needs to be for a 28 inch pizza? Well, a 28 inch pizza from a aptly named Brothers Giant Pizza was on the docket today and you can see here that a thing was massive. What do you do if it's dead slow? If you're waiting 10 minutes, oh, that's kind of long, right? It's not ideal. 15 minutes, you're gonna start to get annoyed. I haven't gotten an order yet. 20 minutes is getting crazy. You're sitting there, and even if you're sitting at a hot spot and you don't have uh, any orders, what do you do? Well, I did end up, unfortunately, it's not my favorite app, but I did take a Postmates order here. Now, one big thing on Postmates, if you're not signed up on the platform yet, is you will not see, this is different than DoorDash, you will not see the earnings that you'll get ahead of time. And if that's not bad enough, you'll also not be able to see the miles on the order. You can see both of those things on other apps, like DoorDash, the earnings up front that you'll get, and the miles, and those are very important because those two key pieces allow you to calculate the dollars to mile ratio, which is really the foundation of how good is this side hustle for me. So that's why, in my opinion, I'm not a big fan of Postmates. It's really the last on my list, and it's for these scenarios. It's as a backup. If DoorDash is super dead, like it was tonight, I used it, and I used it here for this Jersey Mike's order. So as you can see here, there was a $3 bonus. And frankly, that's the only reason I'm driving on Postmates because there was a bonus. So that's number one. Number two, you can see the restaurant location. Of course, that's labeled there. It has a small green dot and you can see my current location. It's not too far away. Now, number three, you see a very, very vague straight line from that green dot, the starting location to that blue dot, the customer's location. And that is it. Again, you have no idea of the actual or even estimated miles. You got nothing. So you really have to understand your markets, understand your roadways, your highways, and how long is it actually going to take you to drive that. <laughs> 
And just a quick reminder, make sure to pause your DoorDash shift. You can go into the settings. You can pause and new orders because obviously you're taking an order on a different app. And also, oddly enough, I accepted this. We can see I accepted it. I accepted this order from Flavors of East Africa because, again, look at the distance. It's pretty short, and we don't need the miles to see that. It's pretty short. I get the $3 bonus, but this order was actually canceled by the customer. It was removed from my itinerary as I was making the delivery on the first order. So that's an example of a stacked order on Postmates. Now, here's the thing. I didn't see any notifications on my phone that the customer canceled this order. Typically, there would be. There'd be a drop-down notification. I'm on an iPhone device. There'd be a drop-down notification that says, the order from Flavors of East Africa was canceled. I don't remember seeing that. And I even looked at my notifications page. I didn't see any notifications there either. So actually, let me know down below in the comments. If you get a stacked order on Postmates specifically, and the customer cancels, do you in fact still get a notification that that customer canceled? Because I was ready to make the pickup here and it was no longer in my itinerary. So while it's not ideal, at least it was a backup because I could have been sitting and waiting for who knows how long on DoorDash. Yes, I probably would have gotten an order eventually, but who knows? So with that being said, this shift that I actually ended early because it was so slow, we'll talk about that as well. Was this shift mismanaged? Was it a bad shift? What do the numbers say? Let's find out. So again, this shift was in Mission Valley here in San Diego. It was on a $4.50 DoorDash peak pay bonus. The shift was from 5.30 p.m. scheduled until 8.30 p.m., but come, I mean, I had enough. <laughs> I ended at 8.15. The gross revenue with the Postmates order was $39.63 which equals a gross revenue per hour of $14.41. Total deliveries completed with the Postmates order was four, and I received three tips. Total business miles, 19.8 for a tax deduction of $11.39. So my thoughts, was this a bad shift? Yes. Was this shift mismanaged? No. So was this a bad shift? I would say yes, but it really wasn't any of my doing. Honestly, I'm sitting by hotspots. I know my marketplace very well, but I only got what $14.41 per hour. Following best practices, I typically make about $25 an hour in gross revenue. So obviously way off there, about $11 off. Number two, going back to the question that I asked you initially at the start of this video, was this shift mismanaged? I don't think it was, and here's why. A mismanaged shift would be driving excessive miles. It would be taking a extremely low dollars to mile ratio order. So I want you to do the same. Even when it's slow out, I don't necessarily want you to lower your standards because I mean, you'll get some money. I mean, you're probably gonna get like what? Base pay, it's four or five bucks, but you're not really gonna be making any net revenue when you do your numbers. And here's an example of the strategy. Let's look at the miles here because the business miles when I was dashing and with Postmates, it was 19.8. Now looking at the gross, it was low. I was not happy with the gross revenue, $39.63. But if we take that divided by the miles, I still averaged $2 per mile. And that's where you want to be. So at a minimum, you should be looking at $1.50 per mile. But again, $2 plus is really where you want to be with this driving. Now imagine that I took less stellar orders. I took subpar orders, ones that were paying a very low dollars to mile ratio. That number, the pay per mile is going to go down, which means my margin for my net revenue is going down as well. So a slow shift and one that was surprisingly so as well. I didn't expect it to be that slow on a Friday night with bonuses spread throughout San Diego as well because other marketplaces had 450 $5 bonuses. So that should spread out drivers. So this shift a little odd, but it happens. That's the name of the game. So let me know how often is it slow in your marketplace? What do you do? Do you have Postmates as the backup? Maybe Postmates is your number one. Let us know down below in the comments. And if you got value in this video, definitely drop me a like. And you can also click or tap the screen in now for my most recent video as well as a video recommended for you, and I'll see you in the next one.